Hi, it's Chantelle here from Fiverific. This week's video, I am venturing into different terrain, different territory. I have a little secret to tell you. Sometimes I like to sew. I know. Now, I'm not teaching a sewing tutorial today or anything like that, so don't panic. But there are some tools that sewers find useful that us as knitters and crocheters can help them out with. So if you are like me and multi-craft your, you can make these for yourself. But if you happen to know a sewer who needs a bit of help, then maybe you can help out a friend. Today we're going to be making these gorgeous pattern weights. In this age of roller cutters, rather than pinning a lot of things down, sometimes it's just a little bit quicker just to pop down your piece of pattern Pop the weights on and run around it with your cutter. Okay, so it's really helpful. Like I hate it when you've pinned out a pattern and realize you're not quite on the grain of your fabric and you've got to unpin it all, move the piece of pattern, slide the pattern back in, pin all the pins back in. Having to re-pin after I've already pinned it, I find frustrating. So having pat pattern weights I find to be really really useful little tools. Now in the pattern that I'm going to be giving away I will have instructions for both a crocheted pattern weight and also a knitted pattern weight and today we're going to be looking at the knitted pattern weight. If you think you'd like for me to do a tutorial on the crocheted pattern weight let me know in the comments down below and we'll add it in in a few weeks time. All you need to get started is the pattern link is just here. You need about 10 grams of a four ply yarn. I'm using sunflower sock yarn because that's what I have but this is a perfect way to use up all your little ends of sock yarn and put them to use. You need about 50 grams of um, fill. Now I'm using poly pellets. You can absolutely use rice but you just need to make sure your stitches are tight enough that the pellets and things don't escape through. The first thing that we're going to learn is how to use magic loop. The reason we're doing this is because this pattern starts just right here in this middle of the bottom and it's continuous. It just comes out and out and out and then we go up and around and then decrease and create a little chain for its handle. When we're doing magic loop I really don't recommend going under 80 centimeters. You have to be able to have your um, stitches here and be able to knit so you've got to have enough to curve around here. So if you pull, having it too tight like that, it can actually cause damage to your needles. Also makes your life just that little bit harder. So you want a little bit of leeway. You want at least sort of, you know, I would say at least five centimeters length to the edge. And then you want to be able to curve around and knit off easily enough. So again, you want another loop on the other end. 100 centimeters is really nice. 80 centimeters will do anything under that and you're asking for trouble. I'm not saying it can't be done, I'm just saying it's gonna be more work. You could absolutely use double pointed needles if you like. I am pretty rubbish with double pointed needles. I end up with a lot of ladders up the sides. So I'm not gonna be using double pointed today. I'm going the magic loop method. Okay, so we've got our goodies here and we're gonna get started. The first thing the pattern says to do is to cast on six stitches. So making a slip knot in your preferred method. Make your slip knot. And then cast on six stitches. Now for this particular one, I just use the standard cable cast on. It's like a knitted cast on to start with for the first stitch. Oops, my ball is a little tightly done. Make sure you don't knit with your tail because we all know I will eventually. Yarn over, draw through the loop, pop it on. So that's two now. And then to go, you go through the middle of the two, yarn around, pop it on, twist it and go through the back. Then through the middle again. Sorry, my hands are shaking just a little. I hope it doesn't make it too hard for you. So that's four. Three. 
five and six. Now this is, while technically this is an easy project, um, I would consider a beginner's project for the most part, but I won't be running through it as a beginner's class as such. To, so what we need to do to create our magic loop now is to take our stitches, slide them to the cable. So we have our six stitches, right? So we want three on the top and three on the bottom so we can do them in our, in our magic loop. So what we do is we bend our cable and pull three stitches down on either side. Now I'm hoping that my fingers are not in the way. There we go, we get our little loop and we pull that a little. Now we work out which side that we want to knit on. Okay, so we've got the tail for the first stitch we cast on is now here on this top loop because we want the ones that we want to join onto this top needle. So we slide that along and we have our end to knit with all ready to go. Okay, so now we knit front and back for all the stitches. So knit front and then knit into the back of that loop. Can you see what I'm going through the back there? Now we've just increased our stitch count and then knit front and then knit back and then knit front and then knit in the back. So we've gone from three stitches to six stitches on this needle. Now we want to knit the bottom three. And to do that, you slide this across, you flip it around, and you pull this cable back, okay? And then you slide your three stitches that you want to knit onto your tip. Now it might be a little bit tight the first time around. And then you pull this cable so that you can knit freely. Okay. So then we get our tail out of the way and our yarn in ready to knit. Now a little tip is I try to make sure this section here is as close as I can get it to this needle here so that it doesn't create a gap or a ladder. So we want to knit front and back on all three of these stitches. Now, just so you know, you've just done the hardest part, okay? Getting those first ones on and working is absolutely the hardest. Now, we want to knit those stitches at the top again. So we slide the cable through that way. We pull that end out and we make sure we've got our tail out of the way because, you know, I'm notorious for knitting the tails. Now what we're going to do is the instructions say to knit front and back for that one stitch and then just knit the next stitch. So we knit, oops, we knit our front, we knit the back, take that off, then we just knit the next stitch. Then we knit front and we knit back, then we knit the next stitch. We do this all the way around. Knit front, knit back, and knit the next stitch. And we do this on the other side as well. So they're out. So they're the ones we've just done. There's obviously more stitches. These are the ones we still need to do. So now we've got a few little stitches on here, and it's going to start getting increasingly difficult to work out which is the ones that we've already done and have we completed a full round or have we just done half a round. So now what I like to do is just grab my lockable stitch marker and just slide it between a couple, like just between a stitch here and just lock it. And you just leave it there. It doesn't, it just gets in the, it, it eventually you won't even notice it. And you'll just go, oh, that's, I've done those ones. Okay. And our next row is knit front and back and then knit two stitches. So we're eventually creating a, a wide base circle. So we knit front, we knit back, and then we knit two stitches. One, and then two, and we do this all the way around. So the instructions um, are written in the pattern, 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to skip ahead because basically now you just keep increasing your stitches in this manner up until you're doing knit front, knit back, and then you're knitting nine stitches. So we're going to skip ahead. So from here, I'm going to time jump to after you've finished your increase rounds and you've knit your three just straight rounds with no increasing and we'll get on to the decreasing rounds. Okay, we're up to our decreasing rounds. We've done all our increasing rounds and you've knit just three rounds of straight knitting. And now you can see we've still got our little purple marker so we know where the front is. And you can see it's probably a lot easier now. Well, you'll know it's a lot easier now to keep going. So we're going to start now with our decreasing rounds. This is just a straight up knit two together decrease. So make sure you've got, sorry, you're not your tail. I actually would recommend tucking the tail into just get him out of the way. He can fit inside the little hammocky thing we've made. All right, so what we're going to do now is knit two together. So put two stitches so there's one so one stitch and two stitch and slide your needle behind and through both at the same time we're knitting two stitches together and then we switch it around just like we were doing for the increase rounds and the knitted rounds and then we do the same thing again knit two together and then knit nine so we finish the end of that round now we just then we knit two straight rounds because we want this to come up in more of a um, tapered way whereas when the bottom came straight out we want this to taper in we don't want it to be squat and short we want a bit more height so we're going to have in between our decrease rounds we've got some plain knit rounds as well. So for our first, we've just got we're going to knit two rounds between the first two decrease rounds. Then we're going to knit one round between the rest of the decrease rounds according to the pattern. So we're going to skip ahead again until we get to the knit two together with two stitches between each. So I'll join you back up there. So I've now gotten up to the round that is just finished the knit two together um, and then the, the round of knitting after it. So you can see we're starting to get like a little ball shaped or deflated ball shaped thing. And now we've just got a couple more rounds to go. So depending on how you feel about putting your pellets in earlier, I tend to wait until right at the end and just squish my finger in the little sort of hole and make room. If you want to pause and do it now you can. I personally just prefer to finish the, all the knitting and then put them in. So we're going to continue on with knit two together and then knit one. And knit one. You can probably see I'm trying to keep it quite tight. Um, I personally am a really loose knitter. So these sorts of things I always find us that little bit tricky trying to make sure I keep it tight enough. So um, yeah, I just try to keep pulling it really tight while I'm doing it just to make sure I don't have any holes. So we're just doing knit two together and then knit one, knit two together. Whoops, I missed a stitch there, didn't I? Knit two together, knit one, knit two together. And knit one. Now we're going to just knit this round. So just knit all the stitches again, keeping them quite tight. This is our last decrease round, and it's just straight up knit two together. And we're going to get back down to our original six stitches that we had right at the start. It's just because I am pulling it so tight, it's just struggling to get out of the little tips a bit. Um, you may not be having the same struggles, but it's just because I do knit loosely that I'm pulling it extra tight. Then we just knit our last round and we cut off a tail of about 15 centimeters, I would say is a good length. 
Um, I personally am going to crochet a little handle using my little tail before I stitch him in but that's a personal preference and you don't have to do that. So another little tool that we probably should have mentioned at the start but I've just realized that I need is this little just it's just a, a blunt tipped weaving in needle and so we just thread our yarn through that there we go and then it's like when you're casting off like a beanie or something like that you've got the threads attached there and then you want to grab this one at the front and just pop it straight off and then this next one here as well and then this one here so we've got the first three so we'll just pull that through and then we just pull these guys down here because you want to do them in order and then you do the next three so we'll just pull that through now we don't want to pull it tight just because we still need to fill him okay so you want to make sure it's loose and you can get your little I've got a little crochet hook I'm going to poke in there and I can get my little hook in there and then what I'm going to do oh, just here we can take that off now as well we don't need that there anymore okay so now it's time to fill this guy up now I've got this little sort of funnel and that works really well for me um, but you could use whatever you wanted I do find that I do have to um, jab it down a little bit they, they do get a bit stabby like they do get a bit stuck this funnel's a bit, bit narrow probably for this sort of job but it's, it eventually works again patience is key and we get it all filled up um, another option would be to make yourself a little um, paper funnel um, it's just a little bit harder to get the paper funnel in um, and to get it to stay I think is probably the biggest problem so yeah so just slowly fill him up until you've used all 50 grams of your beads Anyway, I'll cut over to once it's finished and I'll show you how to fill it. <laughs> I'll show you how to, well, not clean up because, like, seriously, that's going to take me forever. These things have fallen everywhere. Um, <laughs> use rice, people. Use rice or a bigger funnel. <laughs> now, you probably noticed that I'm just giving this a little stretch and a pull as I'm going just to balance it out because we do want it quite full and quite firm as we're filling it so I just sort of give it just a gentle I don't want to pull the stitches too tight but just enough just to get get us just that little bit more sort of give in our yarn but we're nearly done look all right they're all done so pull that out now just get that out of the way now remember how we tied that all through the ends oops there's one little piece there I'll just drop him in we just gently cinch it up yeah, it's completely closed now there's no way any of that's coming through now what I would like to do is just actually run with the needle just run it through a couple of times just to seal it, it doesn't have to be anything glorious and then I also wanted to crochet oops I want it to, so I'm just going to grab a loop through and just crochet chain because I want the little handle, like I said, the little optional handle. Just bring that through. I probably left a lot longer tail than I really needed. 
And there we go. And what I'll do is I'll just go up here and grab that tail. Especially if you don't if you decide you don't want the crochet tail, that's fine. You can just weave that in. Just like you would do with any other knitted or crocheted project. But that's it. We have our little weight. It's done. I've got two little buddies now. Two little knitter buddies. And a crochet buddy. I'm getting a collection, aren't I? These little things are just totally cute and you can absolutely make them more you by using whatever colors you want by stitching on little faces you can even knit little ears for them whatever you want to do to make them a bit more your style or more about what you like so this is just a really basic cute little place to start i think they're totally adorable completely useful and they also just utilize a lot of scraps which we all end up with heaps and heaps of scraps. So that's it for this week's Tuesday tutorial. Uh, don't forget to click like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you want to make sure you're not missing any of these videos, click the little bell icon that's next to the subscribe box. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. It's time for you to fill your universe with fiber fun. Off you go. I'll see you next time. Bye.